Hi everybody, it's Chris from the Evermore YouTube channel, home of the Newcastle United podcast. We're just back with a post, well, pre-match uh, preview for Newcastle United's upcoming game. Seems like five years since we played football last, thanks to the break of the Premier League. So we are back on this weekend. We'll be taking on Bournemouth AFC, which is the Eddie Howard Derby at St James's Park, 3pm on a Saturday. So we're just going to have a little look at it, share my thoughts on how I think the game's going to go and how we're going to line up. So just before we do, a little bit of housekeeping. If you haven't already, please click the like and subscribe button. It would really help you help us grow the channel really appreciate you coming on board we're sitting at about 1818 i think it is now so we're getting really close to 1900 so please click the button help us get there you won't regret it all free content two live shows a week and then pop-up videos like this so let's get stuck into this then so obviously we've uh, had a few uh, weeks or a uh, big break since football really obviously uh, passing following the passing of the queen um football's been on hold some games are still off this weekend but our game is a game that'll go ahead so uh, everyone's chopping a bit, obviously, to get back into it. You know, the fans are gasping to get back to St. James's Park. It should be a real raucous atmosphere. I think there will be some tributes for the Queen, which will be really nice to see, I'm sure. Hopefully, War Flags have got someone up the sleeve. They always see we just pull out the bag for, for moments like this. But, you know, we're dying to get back into action, really. You know, we have gone a few games without a win uh, since that Nottingham Forest opening fixture. Uh, but we are seem to be draw specialists at the moment. We seem to draw games and don't close them off. Obviously, we can blame a lot of things. We can blame VAR. We can blame referees. Um, we can blame big four bias. But we can also blame probably a bit of lackluster finishing, really, and obviously missing some some key players. So team news for us, um, it looks like we're going to have at least Bruno back, I think, for this game. Possibly Callum Wilson on the bench. That That would be a massive boost for us. Um, but it might be a bit too soon for Maxi. So just having a look at how I think we're going to line up going into this game. I do think Eddie Howe is going to pull um, something out of the bag here. And when I say something out of the bag, I think he's going to give the young man his start against Bournemouth and St. James's Park. We've been talking about him for weeks. Me and PK are a huge fan of the lad, much like everybody else. Uh, Elliot Anderson, I believe this is how we're going to line up. So obviously, man the moment, Nick Pope and goal. Um, absolutely brilliant. Probably the best keeper in the Premier League at the moment. Certainly should be England's number one. No doubt in my mind about that. Steady back four of Trippier, Shaw, Botman and Target. Again, who's very unlucky not to be in the England squad. The midfield three, I think Joe Willock will keep his place. Me and Mark did a video of Joe Willock recently, uh, just how he's evolved as a player. He is getting into goal scoring opportunities and we really hope that a team like Bournemouth who possibly leave space from to find those uh, positions might give him the chance to break his duck and get his goal. Uh, Bruno will be back, I'm sure, pulling the strings in midfield, which is massive for us. He's been such a loss. Joe Linton, the engine in midfield, you know, I think he's really going to look to dominate this game. And then in the front three, this is where I think the surprise package is going to be. Alexander Rizak will obviously start the game. If Callum Wilson's on the bench, that'll be absolutely amazing. But I do think we're going to have Anderson and Miggy. It could easily be Fraser as well, but I do think that Anderson's going to get his chance to, to start this game. And I think once you give the lad his chance, I don't think you'll ever look back. I think he showed in cameos how good he could be. I'd love to see him involved from the start, much like a lot of other people would be. I think he could dominate. He could he could really get us in front of the game, you know, make that killer pass, maybe score that killer goal, get us really in cruise control in the game. And then, you know, if if Bournemouth start to come back into it, potentially like they did against, you know, uh, Nottingham Forest in the last game when they won 3 2, you know, it was a brilliant, brilliant uh, comeback from uh, from Bournemouth in that game. Gary Neal's got them playing quite well as well, to be fair. So even though he's only interim manager, uh, they are putting in a bit of a shift for him. But I do think we'll have too much for Bournemouth at the weekend. We, we were quite <laughs> quite confident, possibly arrogant on the podcast by saying four and five nils. But somebody is due a pace in off Newcastle. The, the way we've played, you know, the, the fluency, the, the, the transition in play, the quality. You know, we played against Liverpool and City. We didn't look out of our depth at all. We looked like we could hang with both of those sides. Yes, we had our big players then, Wilson, Bruno and, and Maxi being the main three. We're still without John Joe Shelby too. Gordon Eddie Howe, he's not too far away, which, which would be another brilliant addition to the squad. But we still played well in those games, even, you know, in the Liverpool game without those star players. So I do think we'll have too much for Bournemouth. I really hope we do anyway. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm backing us to be dominant in this game. But, you know, we'll have a look at the head-to-head -head fixtures and see if it's in our favour or not. So you see there the, the eight Premier League games that we've played together. You can see there it is heavily weighted in the Cassie United's favour. We've won four. Uh, Bournemouth have won two. Eddie Howe possibly managed a few of these. Uh, we scored 14 goals. Uh, they've scored 11. And then uh, we had one clean sheet and they had one clean sheet. So you can see that the last five games that we've played, um, you know, we've won 4-1, 1-2-1, one, uh, one, one, drew 2-2. Two, two, um, one two one and then drew two two as well. So the, the odds are in favour here for Newcastle United to get that win. But you can see that Bournemouth are coming off the back of that three two victory against Nottingham Forest, so they will be full of confidence. You know we are getting frustrated by the amount of draws that we're having. 
Um, we have got the, the quality and we've created opportunities to kill off those chances, but just haven't taken them. But I really do think that the space that Bournemouth will leave for the lads at the weekend, I really think will give us the opportunity to, to, to have a comfortable and comprehensive win here. If we've got the big players back, like Bruno in midfield in particular is the biggest, but even Wilson off the bench, be a big game for Callum Wilson. I'm sure he'll want to be fit for this. This is a club that has got a special place in Callum's heart. You know, he played a lot of games and scored a lot of goals for them. As Brian Fraser representing them really well, I know it went a bit sour towards the end. Matt Ritchie, um, Eddie Howe, you know, there's there's a real there's a real connection between these two clubs. The Bournemouth fans have been brilliant, you know, ever since we got Eddie Howe. They've been so complimentary. Very rarely you see an ex-manager get so universally praised and loved, but just testament to the kind of job that Eddie Howe did for the Cherries, taking them, you know, from the relative obscurity of lower league football up to Premier League football side. And uh, yeah, I think there'll be a good atmosphere at the ground. I think there'll be a good atmosphere in the pubs as well around the ground. I think Bournemouth and Newcastle share a, a love and a kinship of Eddie Howe. And I think that'll that'll resonate, you know, through the fans, which I think will be absolutely brilliant to see, you know, because that's what football should be about, really. You know, yes, we want to win the 90 minutes, of course, and the Bournemouth fans will be given stick and we'll be given stick. But at the end of the day, you know, Bournemouth seem like a decent club and I hope they do well this season. Maybe not the weekend, obviously, but I hope they do well this season. Um, you know, they need to get the managerial position sorted out. If it's Gary O'Neill, if it's not, they need to get on there. But, you know, in terms of the, the, the Bournemouth side, and like I say, it was a great win for them coming coming back. In terms of their um, their main changes to the squad, again, we're not a Bournemouth podcast, but there is one thing I, I wanted to mention. And I know uh, our squad member, Di, Di Reese would, would, would certainly want me to do this and he'd tell me off if I didn't. But apparently David Brooks... Um, could be in for a return to the first team um, after building up his fitness for the under-21s. Those who didn't know, uh, David Brooks not too long ago um, had a, a cancer uh, scare, cancer cancer situation, and obviously he, he had to you know withdraw from you know competitive football for quite a period of time. But he's he's got himself back and fit. And do you know what? Knowing the Newcastle fans as I do, if he comes off the bench, I think you'll get a massive round of applause through, for all corners of the ground for that. So it's really good to see David Brooks back in the world of football, just a little touch I wanted to say there because, yeah, it seems like a really good player, you know, and that's a horrible thing that happened to anybody and he looks like he's overcome it. So, well done, David Brooks, and I really hope that he uh, he goes on and has a great season. Just not a good game on Saturday, hopefully, <laughs> set the rest of the Bournemouth players. But, yeah, I'm feeling confident. I think uh, there's a good chance we could win this and win this strong. Um, like I say, we're, you know, we, we are playing some good football. I think Isaac will have learned his lessons as well from the, the Palace game. I think Willock will be learning lessons from the Palace, Palace game as well. He needs to take time, stop rushing the finish. And I think the goals are going to come, as, as Mark said, in our special. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go for, I think I said 5-0 as a joke on the podcast. Realistically, I'm going to go for a 4-0 Newcastle United win here. I'm feeling really confident. I think we've, we've got the quality to, to see Bournemouth off. You know, they'll be worried about this game. You know, St. James Park is a fortress to come to at the moment. The best of the best come here. You know, we were 3-1 up against them in Manchester City. Yes, we stepped off and let them back in. That's where we've got to change. That's where we've got to improve. We can't let teams get back into games. Bournemouth have showed they've got bounce back ability, you know, by coming back against Nottingham Forest and winning that game 3-2. So we really need to make sure we're disciplined at the back, you know, Pope has a good game, which he always seems to do. Touch wood, hopefully he will have again. You know, Bruno come back in that midfield will be huge if that can happen. Yes, and I'm back in Elliot Anderson to make that start and make the difference. So let us know what you guys think in the comments below. If you're as confident as I am, let's look forward to the game. And as I mentioned at the start, if you haven't already and you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button. We'd love you to come on board. Um, we've got loads of content up our sleeves, all free of charge. Don't intend to charge anybody at these difficult times. So just make sure you smash that button in there and come and join us. So let's keep supporting that team. McCoy United, let's hope for three points on Saturday. This is Chris signing off. See you later, guys.